Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to look at animation in Clow 3D per request. We're gonna start off really high level, just figuring out how to do animation in Clow 3D. Um, and then we're gonna look at how to actually render these animations that we create. My next video, I'm gonna be talking a little bit more in detail about animation. We're gonna look at custom workflows between Adobe Miximo and Clow. Um, but for this video, we're gonna keep it pretty simple and just learn how to animate some basic garments. So let's get started. Okay, so here we have a basic dress that I created for this tutorial. You wanna make sure your garment is on your avatar in an A or a T pose. Um, and then we're gonna go up to the top right corner, click simulation and drop down to the animation window. This is where everything is gonna happen animation wise. We have a timeline down here where we'll be able to see our recorded animations. Um, and we can also make adjustments over here as well. So to start, we want to give this avatar um, rig it and have the walking data be attached to this avatar um, and we do that by going to avatar and then selecting whatever avatar you chose so here this is v female v2 motion and then selecting whatever walk sequence you want you kind of just have to watch them see which one you like uh, no hand no hands pose is pretty standard so i'm gonna choose this we want to move avatar to garment start position and make sure transition animation is also checked uh, 30 frames per second as well. So now we can see that some data popped up in the timeline. What this means is that our avatar now has um, walking data attached to her. So she can move, um, but her garment doesn't move with her. So that's, of course, a problem. Um, how we record animation for the garment itself is se selecting this button right here, this record button. But before we do that, I want to jump back into simulation and just call out a few important things that I like to make sure are done before I actually go and record an animation. So one thing, for example, with this dress that I would do, this is sort of an elastic or strap um, detail that I wanted to include. But with something like that, I usually always strengthen it just so it, it simulates a little bit cleaner. And then generally with straps, it helps if you go up to the pins and attach pins to the straps and shoulders as well. Um, and anywhere else that you think that this garment might need to be pinned. I just find that that generally helps things stay a little bit nicer and you get less issues when you actually simulate. So tack and then choose your click on your fabric. Oops, sorry. Tack on avatar, click on your fabric, click on your avatar, and then you now have the garment um, staying in that point. So I did that at the shoulders. Sometimes I do it right here. Um, anywhere that you think might need a little bit of, of support when animating this garment. The next thing I like to do is make sure nothing is solidified um, and only the areas that are strengthened are the areas that I want to sort of not have any motion. Anything else down here, we want the dress to have very fluid motion, so we are going to leave the rest. Um, also, just do your basic things like making sure your particle distance is low between 5, 8, 10, um, and making sure you have the correct fabric settings that you want because now it, now it does matter when you are actually animating a garment. Um, if you want it to look realistic, you want to have the fabric that you choose. So once you've sort of cleaned up the garment or prepped the garment, you can jump back into animation and then you can hit the record button. And well, it might be a little bit slow depending on the complexity of the garment, but what it's gonna do is go frame by frame and walk through building this animation. So just be patient, um, let it do its thing. It may take you know, two, three, four, five minutes and then you'll be able to review it and make any changes if necessary. If you let that ran, now you should have something like this, the full walk sequence. Um, you should be able to scroll through it like this using this little tab, um, but you also should be able to hit play, this play button in the center, and just walk it, watch it. Um, you can also watch it in different speeds, so you can slow it down or watch it really fast. Um, I just watched it around one. And then these two buttons obviously jump to the beginning and the end. Um, down here, you can um, see your current frame. You can set a start frame and an end frame. So this will come in handy when we actually render. Let's say I want to start at 50 and end at 500. Well, now you can see this blue bar 
um, limited the video to just these specific frames. So this will help when we're trying to render um, parts of this video. But overall, hopefully your garment is looking pretty good at this point. Sometimes it can take two to three times of walking through this recording process to get it looking right. So just be patient. Um, let's say I recorded this and then I found out right here that the garment was drooping a lot. Okay, well now I have to redo it, but let me add another pin, maybe strengthen something else. So you just really kind of have to take it garment by garment and try to figure out every time you do this, um, how to make it better and solve the issues that you are experiencing. Um, but this one came out pretty well. You know, let's say this top piece was falling, maybe I would strengthen the top, the entire top or solidify the entire top and then just leave the bottom natural. Um, so you just kind of have to use your judgment and figure out how to um, kind of correct whatever issues you're coming up with. But once we have our completed animation, um, then we can start to render it. Okay, so for rendering, we can stay in the animation tab, but we want to go up to the top bar and hit render. Um, this is going to bring this whole window open, which is where we actually mess with the render settings and see the render output. So once we have everything finished, we're all ready to, we're happy with the garment, we're all ready to render it. We move over here to the animation or rendering window. We click on um, this button first, this gallery button. I'm going to make this a little bigger. So we can see all of our settings over here to start with. First of all, default is image. Usually when you render something, you get an image. We want to turn it to animation. That way it's actually looking at this data down here that we just recorded. So we can either do play region or entire region. Entire region means the entire region you recorded. Play region refers to the region that you set down here. So 50 to 500, the start and end. Um, so you can decide if you want the whole video or a part of the video. Um, you can do whatever width or, or height you want for your project resolution. I do 300. Um, and then you can give it your project name, custom name, or the project name. Project name will be long animation dress 2. Custom name, I'm going to type in down here. So it just depends how you want it named. And then make sure to select a folder that you want all of your um, you know, images to go into. Um, because what essentially this render is doing is giving you, you know, a couple hundred images that we're going to convert to a video. So PNG is fine. Um, then I also move over here to render properties. This button right here. Um, I like to turn, it okay, it depends what quality you're going for. This right here, 50, is the default quality. Um, and it's okay. When I'm doing something high quality, I like to go between, you know, 10, 20, um, but again, the lower quality or the higher quality you do, the lower number you do, the more time it's gonna take. So this is really up to you how important high quality is on this render. If you're just looking for something fast, you could probably get away with doing between like 20, 30, 40. Um, but if you want a really high quality render, turn this down as much as you can tolerate um, and then make sure these are too very high. Um, if you're doing something, again, it doesn't matter. It doesn't need to be super high quality, you know, medium or high is fine. But if you want a really good quality render, very high and then low noise threshold. Um, also, naturally, it defaults to CPU. I turn on my GPU. That just means that the graphics card is supporting this render, so it will go faster. Um, then you can also mess with lighting. I'm definitely going to do another video that talks more in detail about render settings. So I'm going to keep this one pretty, pretty surface level. Um, but once you're happy with everything that you've set up, you're sure animation is checked. Um, you're sure, you know, all of your settings are exactly what you want. Then we simply figure out where we want the camera set by figuring out where our avatar stops usually. So if she stops right here, maybe we want our camera set there. So she walks up to it and she leaves. So let's do that. And then we can get a uh, use interactive render to get kind of an idea of what that looks like. Perfect. Um, also, you can swap up backgrounds, but I'm just keeping it straightforward with black right now. 
So everything checks out. I like the way the camera is. I don't mind the lighting. The quality is pretty good. Once I'm happy with everything, I am going to hit play. And what it's going to do, it's going to start from the very first frame. And up here, you will see the status. So it's rendering image one out of 618. Um, I have a PC, so it's going reasonably fast, but some people that work on laptops might be a little bit slower. So you really have to just balance your desire for a high quality project with how much time you have, because this render could take a very long time if it's 600 frames. Um, so now we're, we're three frames done. So this probably would take a few hours. Um, at this point, you just leave your computer, let it do its thing. And then when it's done, it will give you a pop-up saying it's done. And then next, I'm going to show you how I assemble it into a video. All right, so the first thing we are going to do here is jump into Adobe Premiere. This is what I use to make all of my videos. Um, we are going to go File, Import. We are going to find the folder containing all of the animation renders that we just saved. Um, I, we are going to select the first one of the sequence. We are going to hit Image Sequence. Make sure that is checked, and then File, Open. And what that is going to do is compile all of these render images that you just created through Clo and bring them into Premiere as a video. So here's just a short little demo version of it. But as you can see, all of our uh, images were compiled into a nice, neat video. And then we are just going to file export and we will have our full animation video. All right, and that's it. Hopefully you got something that looks something like this. Um, and you're able to follow this tutorial pretty well with your own garments. Um, if not, please leave any comments in the comment section. I'd be happy to try to answer any questions you have or further explain. Um, but good luck with the rest of your animation. And I look forward to dropping a video about bringing custom animations into Clo3D next week. So stay tuned and thank you for watching.